Good morning, folks. We've got a complete breakdown of NASA's major exoplanet announcement yesterday, a look at events from beneath our feet, and finish up with the wind maps. But we begin over at spaceweathernews.com. We're checking out the last 24 hours on our star. Another reminder that brief blackouts are occurring during this time of year due to the Earth eclipsing the view. I do go check other satellites to make sure nothing was missed. And indeed, all is calm on our star. The solar wind arriving at Earth is in a bit of flux, but only in moderate range, so the KP index is in moderate range as well. That's the Space Weather Health Safety Zone, by the way. We did get one C flare yesterday. It is noteworthy by comparison, but by itself still nothing scary. The sunspot appears to be in decay and have little to no magnetic danger, so when it tried to fire it was just a little growler that struggled to even reach up into the corona. No CME associated. It's fun to be able to shrug off explosions three times bigger than our entire planet. Moving on, we had some above average quaking near Cascadia in the four point range and so we will be eyeing for atmospheric signals today. We also had one strike in northern Russia where the north magnetic pole is tracking as Earth continues its march towards a magnetic excursion or a full reversal. We also had a few blot echoes in the last day at significant depths. We'll try to update the alert map right after the news. But now it's time for the top story. Folks, we've got an ultra-cool dwarf star about the same size as Jupiter, and it's got seven Earth-sized rocky planets. Between NASA and the European Southern Observatory, they really swung for the fences with their animation fly-throughs of the system. If you are a veteran observer, these images are starting to look very familiar to you. That's because we created very similar images as part of the Starwater series. More on that in a moment. But if you click the link, you can get these videos and a number of very helpful infographics detailing the size of our solar system versus the size of the Trappist 7 planet system, and also comparisons come for Jupiter and its moons, indicating that this system is actually much more like Jupiter or Saturn than our own. All seven planets orbit closer to the star than Mercury does to our sun, and I wonder if an uncaptured Jupiter or Saturn system would receive enough cosmic energy to light up in its own right like this one. As of now, all our planets are shielded from external power by the sun's magnetic field. Folks, if you want the number one video series we have, it's free. And back in 2013, just about all these exoplanet stories were predicted as a floodgate opening of sorts in the field was seen on the horizon. They've done a lot to make those predictions look good in the last four years. Again, free, most watched videos we have. I've got tons of emails, mostly in Italian, which I don't speak, asking why after we began yesterday with a green alert for Italy, which includes their volcanoes, we took it off in the afternoon to evening hours just a little bit later in the next alert map. It's because the Etna volcano had started going off. That was what we believed was coming, and when it happened, the pressure was relieved. Expect this phase maybe to last into the weekend. Last little story here is about a gorgeous emerald vortex in Lake Maracaibo. They say ocean currents from the northern opening cause the swirl. As a note, those vortices are also electromagnetic phenomenon, and this is indeed the lake that houses the mouth of the Catatumbo River where the everlasting lightning storms occur. Did someone say something about electromagnetism? Never mind. Hey folks, the red and purple you see are low pressure earth spots, yellow to high is high pressure. The lows withdraw moisture from the tropical vapor bank and begin pulling it in towards them, transforming the water into clouds along the way as it approaches the pressure cells, and then dropping precipitation as the pressure cells move across the world. And now you're a weatherman. We're getting excited just about 40 days away from observing the frontier and the special guest attendee list is getting as impressive as the presenters list itself. I will ask people not to bug them for autographs while other people are speaking. Anyway, if you didn't catch the newest episodes of Deeper Look, they will be helpful considering our second installment of Mind War should post to that page today. Right now, right here, we've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.